statistics that you read are absolutely heart-wrenching. And of course, the two are actually interlinked because you know that food distribution and the logistics thereof are very much to do with transport and trucks in particular. So it's quite important that we look at road safety also in light of the food crises across the continent. So I'm glad to be focusing on this, but let's bring it a little bit closer to home and bring it right to the Free State Province. That's where we are at the moment. I'm joined by the MEC for Police, uh, Roads and uh, Transport. Uh, his title is much longer. I've tried to uh, simplify it a little bit to Mr. Butana Kompela. Very good morning to you, MEC. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda. Good morning to all the viewers of the SABC. I'm going to first start by highlighting successes of the province when it comes to uh, road carnage. Uh, I know that the 2014-2015 December statistics uh, showed a reduction of 17% in road fatalities in the province. To what can you attribute that success? And I would like you to say to me first, I am holding position one for four years as the safest province in the country in terms of crime in the country. Yeah. Congratulations. You can ask me how I'm managing now again to be the best on the road safety. And really that is a, a question of visibility. Uh, if you don't have visibility, people tend to forget that they must obey the law. Most important thing is not necessarily that it should be their consciousness, but as and when they see the blue light in the evening going up and down or during the day they see a vehicle of the traffic officers. Then anybody who sees the traffic officer quickly uh, try to uh, uh, be a law-abiding citizen. Although it's not supposed to be, it should be voluntarily. But uh, the attribution to our road fatalities uh, decrease is uh, we have pumped in traffic officers and we bought cars so that at least must be visible and even now there's 150 that now in December are going out of college we're putting them through on the road we want to everywhere the road must be blue at night and during the day so that at least people must not do as they wish. Now we've spoken about your successes but how are you going to maintain that and make sure that we see an even further reduction because one death on the road is one too many. So you've mentioned the visibility what else will you be focusing on? Another thing, uh, and we are claiming down on issues of uh, lawlessness. We are claiming down seriously on issues of people that are disobeying the laws of the road. Because when we go and pick up and go and look for a license, you are see, this nice person, when it is said slow vehicles must keep left and pass right, and then you know all those other things. But when it comes to practice, you have to obtain a driver's license, then you drive with impunity. One of the things that we are we're doing continuously is visibility, but the most serious thing now, we are climbing down on all those. If you cross on the barrier line in the free state, we open up a docket, we charge you for reckless driving and negligence. If it's a double barrier line or you drive over the island, all those kind of things, and then they will tell you that, oh, free state, you're charging people on petty things. It is not petty when somebody crosses on the barrier line because there's an oncoming vehicle, it can cause accident. So we are not playing with those people on that. One of the things that we are doing very well in the free state is to be very firm on those who are disobeying the rules. Let's talk about something that perhaps the Free State Province isn't doing so well. A lot of people lamenting the fact that the condition of the roads is a little bit problematic. The potholes to be in particular, that if you're traveling from Johannesburg, you can almost see where Free State ends and KwaZulu Natal begins because then from KZN, the roads are much smoother. What are we doing to make sure that we deal with the infrastructure? And I, I do not think where we to get that, but uh, the imperial evidence is that we are the third best on the road in the country. It's Gauteng, of course, uh, the Etoll and the improvement of the roads there. And then the second one is uh, uh, Western Cape. And then we are the third. Uh, and we are the most rural area in the... Yes, when you compare us with uh, KwaZulu Natal, we beat KwaZulu Natal on, on good roads. And then I'm saying that on the national television. But uh, we are beaten by Gauteng because you know that there is a huge uh, face lifting of roads there and uh, Western Cape has got good roads but the rest of other provinces are not beating us on the roads because we have dedicated ourselves in making sure that if we make roads to be right but uh, they have a, a, a consequence uh, if roads are good everybody drives faster because the roads are smooth but however we can't let the roads collapse because people are driving very fast we have to be really honest on those people uh, and say you can't drive like that and then we must deal with that kind of a person. 
Well, in this particular uh, transport corridor, the N3, N5, we are seeing some improvements just traveling to this broadcast today. We did see some roadworks there. Tell us a little bit more about some of that infrastructure development that we're seeing. That uh, uh, is part of us, our partnership with Sandral. Uh, for uh, trying to close potholes is a resealing and patching process that one it's not a road construction you can see it's just cutting over the layer and uh, put another layer there so that you create it to be a more smoother and uh, so that you remove the small potholes there it's a process that when the road after some time is uh, is showing that it's, it's now getting a uh, 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 dilapidated you put a resealing and patching so all many of the roads especially the national roads uh, that are passing through the Free State and elsewhere, uh, ourselves and the Sandral, we are doing the resealing so that at least by December, when anybody goes home and anybody goes for a vacation, at least they must drive on a reasonable, fair, good roads. We've spoken about infrastructure, we've spoken about uh, uh, law enforcement, making sure that drivers obey the rules of the road. Let's talk about other stakeholders now who are involved here and the ripple effect. We're at a truck uh, stop and we saw firsthand yesterday young ladies who are around here. We don't have any facts or proof that they are involved in uh, prostitution, but it has been said, speaking to some of the locals here, that it is quite rife. Uh, illegal rendering of sexual um, services in this particular area. Is there anything that is being done? It, is, it was rampant. And the trucks here were just stopping anywhere. You can, if you can go to town and go and ask any citizen they'll tell you that they would even park on the driveway and when you ask them to remove the truck they would just go out of the truck and beat you so there was a campaign that we have done and remove all the trucks and take them away you'll never see trucks in the at night here yeah, except those that are in the truck uh, uh, stand there but on the road you never yes Again, this was the place that was rife of these ladies who are selling sweets to the truck people all over here. So it is, it has a little bit gone down now because we have now said no trucks is going to park on the road. You remember the accident of uh, uh, the teachers in Gauteng uh, up there at the corner there. It was purely because, because the truck was on the road and somebody was not there. He was gone and then and the that truck driver was trying to get a shortcut uh, to go to the main road. So there is no more uh, a, a huge truck standing here. Before you'd get more than 1,000 trucks standing here. So there was no place. And then when we decided as a free state and police and everybody that we are claiming down on these trucks. I can tell you, can ask all of them. We took them. Others lost their job because we have taken the trucks and the owners, some things rot, get rotten in the truck and then we have teach them a lesson. And now again, we, we are policing and check what is happening. If anybody wants to rest, this is a resting place. There are beds there. There are rooms there. There are washing uh, showers there. So you must go in and go and park the truck there and rest, which is something that we want our people to do as they're traveling for a very long distances, because unfortunately with the trucks, I don't know what kind of business is trucks, because trucks do not have two drivers. An airplane has two drivers, a bus has two drivers, but when it comes to trucks, somebody leaves in Popo and go to Cape Town and come back, and that person drives alone in the truck. Now we are going also, uh, in this transport month, going to clamp down on people that are driving alone. The owner of the truck will come and fetch it here and, uh, and tell us why is he not having a driver when this truck comes from Limpopo, when the trucks come from uh, Deben. So that we must check why are these people uh, abusing one single person and he gives me a, a mega salary uh, in that long hours over the weekend, over the holidays alone. They don't mind the fatigue of these people. They care about the income that they will get out of those people. So we are not going to accept that. Anymore. The profit and the bottom line. We're going to shift focus uh, just after the short break to the truck owners then and the roadworthiness of their vehicles. I'm going to try and see if I can get under one of those trucks and see what's supposed to be where. But it's absolutely important because you can bring in government as much as you like. You can bring in um, the truck drivers themselves. But at the end of the day, the buck must stop with the owner of the vehicle and whether or not it is fit to be in use. That under the spotlight after the short ad break. MEC, thank you so much for having joined us. We'll leave it there at least for now more in just a moment. Stay with us.